If you have a chicken or want to work with chickens in a veterinary setting, this video is for you, as today we're going to discuss one of the most common medical issues in chickens, bumblefoot. Bumblefoot, also known as pododermatitis, is an inflammatory condition affecting the bottom of a chicken's foot. This chicken has been sedated and given pain medication by using a combination of injectable midazolam and butorphanol. I also use lidocaine to numb the area, either by injecting or using a topical cream. Now it's time to debride the bumbles. The scabs are usually the tip of the iceberg and once removed, firm pus can be flushed out. These often bleed a lot as the foot is very vascular, so I have used a tourniquet in severe cases. Due to the way that their white blood cells handle infections, birds often form very hard or caseous pus that is unable to drain by itself and needs to be dug out. PoultryDVM.com is a great resource I send all of my chicken owners to, and their Bumblefoot handout has this nice picture of the stages of Bumblefoot ranging from 1 to 5. In severe cases, infection causes a hard, pus-filled abscess covered by a scab, and the chickens become lame or reluctant to walk. Mild cases may be treated with husbandry changes and at-home treatments, but more severe cases need to be treated by a vet with antibiotics, pain medication, and surgery to clean out the thickened pus. In the most severe cases, x-rays should be taken to see if infection has spread to the bone, as this carries a much worse prognosis. Factors that increase a bird's risk of bumblefoot include being overweight, being housed on muddy or rough surfaces, having improper perches or unsanitary conditions, vitamin deficiencies, or getting a wound on the foot. Common bacteria involved with these infections include E. coli and staph. At-home treatments involve soaking a chicken's feet in Epsom salt or chamomile tea, cleaning them with chlorhexidine or dilute betadine, and dressing them with topical medications such as SSD cream or Manuka honey. Some owners are able to bandage the feet themselves, but I would only advise doing this if you've been shown how to do it properly, as bandaging incorrectly or too tightly can cut off circulation of the toes and do more harm than good. Debridement surgery is needed for more severe cases, but should only be performed by a vet, as it is a painful and stressful procedure and is considered inhumane to do so without proper pain medications. It's best to pick antibiotics based off of a culture, but a common antibiotic I like to start with is trimethoprim sulfa, which is available in liquid and tablet form. Remember, in the United States, it is illegal to use enrofloxacin in chickens of any age. Common pain medications I use for aftercare are carprofen or meloxicam. When prescribing medications to chickens, be sure to contact FARAD or FARAD to find out withdrawal times if you are in the US. Once all the firm pus is dug out, I flush the wound with copious amounts of dilute betadine. The wound on the bottom of the foot and the top of the foot actually communicated, and you could flush right through. Once I'm happy with the flushing, I then pack the wound with Manuka honey. You can also apply SSD cream to the wound. There are a couple different ways to bandage. I start by applying a non-stick pad. In this case, I'm using a pool noodle to take pressure off of the center of the pad, where the wound is, but you don't always have to do this step especially if it's not in the correct location. Then I wrap it with a thick layer of cast padding, making sure not to wrap too tightly. The next step is to wrap with vet wrap. I've chosen a nice hot pink color for our beautiful lady here. It's usually much prettier if you use a roll with thinner width. Cutting it in half widthwise and re-rolling helps make it easier to get between the toes and to have the vet wrap lie flat. We are running short on time making this video. Remember that you don't want to cut off circulation of the toes or you're causing more harm than good. Make sure the vet wrap is going just over the cast padding and not touching the skin, and again, not too tight. I then use Elasticon to secure the top of the bandage to the skin so it doesn't slip, as well as placing a layer on the bottom to help increase traction for when the bird walks. I often instruct owners to soak and clean the feet, as well as reapply the bandages daily until the wounds are healed. And here's our stunning patient after she's been fitted with her new shoes. 